Hello, it's Alex. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I mentioned on my last video that I really was dying to make myself a new Stylark Parker coat and that is what I'm planning to do today. And I'm going to kind of check in with you along the way and talk you through where I've got with it. Uh, I'm not going to go as far as saying it's a tutorial, but yeah, you'll be with me along the way. Um, one of the reasons why I really like this coat I mentioned last time is that it is somewhere between a coat and a coatigan. So it is, as far as coats are going to ever be, it is a really pretty simple and pretty straightforward coat to sew. It comes with a collar that sort of stands proud and upright. And you can turn it over, but if you do that, it's going to be relatively narrow. Um, this is, here's one I made earlier. When I say earlier, I mean years ago. Obviously it's quite a dark colour. I'm not entirely sure if you can see that that's how the collar is. And it sits, for me, I've always left it sitting upright, but turned over, yeah. It's gonna be, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that, but it's not gonna be the widest lapel. So you might want to add a little bit to it if that's something you wanted to do. It also doesn't have any fastenings. And again, I don't see why you couldn't add a button or some stud poppers if you wanted to, but I've always found it a great coat for just throwing on and I very rarely do my buttons up on a coat. So for me, I've never bothered. It has a really nice seam detail across. Uh, it's not the waist, it's kind of below the waist. Sorry, just checking the picture and two big patch pockets and a vent at the back. <laughs> it's been so long since I made this that I had completely forgotten that it requires a stretch fabric. And I only realized that when I was halfway, well, even more than halfway through cutting them out. And I noticed the magical words on one of the pattern pieces that said maximum stretch, direction of maximum stretch. And I went, oh, I haven't got a stretch fabric here. But I knew that I'd made the boiled wool one and that's not a stretch fabric. So I think the requirements of th for something like a ponty, so we're not talking super stretchy. And then it does mention light woven. Not sure I'm choosing a light woven, but I had a little look. I'm having known that I've made the boiled wool one and the previous gray one and I got away with it. This fabric I've got, which I showed you on the last video, it's double faced, just a scrap. It's double faced. So it's gray, just darker on one side and lighter on the other. I'm going to use the, where is it? The darker side, public facing. It does have a little bit of natural give to it. Um, so happy days. It is hopefully going to work, which is just as well, because I'd cut out the lion's share of it by the time I noticed. Um, so yeah, I think if you've got a little bit of give, and maybe the trick might be to size up, go up a size, um, as luck would have it, I have cut out a size 12, and I'm my measurements put me as a size 10. So that was only because that was the only pattern I had. But anyway, I'm hoping that I will get away with it. And I've used a stretch fusible interfacing because I figured that if it's asking for a bit of stretch on the fabric it would make sense to do the same on the facing. So I've used a, say, a stretch interfacing. Get my teeth in. This is a perfect coat to make if you fancy doing a bit of colour blocking because you've got the top and the bottom part come in two separate pieces. There's no reason why you couldn't flip one over and have it a different way out or you could flip, you know, I could have my pockets the light way out against, is that right? No, that way around. I could have the pockets light against the dark grey, if I fancied it. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm making it all the same because I don't really want it to be too much of a statement. I just want this to be an easy to wear, throw it on jobby. The first instruction is, um, kind of what you'd expect really, which is to attach the tops to the bottom along that joining seam on the front. And then you overlock it, you press it up, I think, 
and the new top stitch it. So as I mentioned, I'm using variegated, I mentioned on last week's video that is, I'm using variegated overlocking thread. So I've got two cones of that and they are in the loopers and then just plain grey are in the two bits of the overlocker that just do the needles, just do the stitching. So while I'm pinning, I thought the other thing I would mention, uh, or another reason why I think this is a nice easy coat to make, is that the sleeve, I'm pretty sure, is um, not a set-in sleeve, I think you insert it flat, and it's one of those sleeves that you cut on the fold, so there's not a back and a front, so it's really super, super easy, you don't have to worry with all that sleeve malarkey. Okay so my seams are all done. So they're looking like that on the wrong side and like that on the right side. So overlocked and then pressed upwards and top stitched. Obviously I'm kind of making a bit of a feature of this overlocking on these seams. You can overlock them, you could use some fancy schmancy binding, you could do a flat filled seam which would be super neat if you haven't got an overlocker a flat filled seam works well or even most regular sewing machines have a stitch that kind of looks a bit like overlocking if you don't want to just zigzag so there are options so the next instructions is to prep the pockets so i'm going to overlock all the edges of this first and then fold down at those notches and so it's just that little section there where you fold it down. Okay, so, so the pockets are all ready. I just need to, that's what it looks like on the inside. So I just need to top stitch this down. Um, and obviously I've folded and pressed the other three edges down with my, with my iron. My trick for keeping the pockets looking really neat and the angles absolutely, you know, in the right place is the prim ironing board cover that I have, which has um, measurements and lines at all the right angles. It's really, really good. So that's what I've used. And the other trick, of course, just to make sure, because there's two of them and you don't want them to different sizes, is obviously literally just to put one on top of the other, nice and flat, and check that they're matching. Okay, so my pockets are all ready to go on. And, um, I can just about see the chalk markings on the pattern piece where, I don't know whether you can, but I can just about see where I need to pin them on. Um, obviously the chalk markings are there, but I will also double check that they are hitting exactly the same point on both pattern pieces just by measuring. I did want to say while I'm doing this, uh, that I am really appreciating all the comments on the my last video, the one about the curated closet, because I was a bit worried. A, it's an incredibly long video, so um, that concerned me. And I was just worried that it might seem all a bit indulgent and you might all think, why is this woman... Yeah, anyway, don't need to put those bad thoughts in your heads. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was worried about it and that it might not be very well received. But actually, I'm having some lovely, lovely comments. Um, it's interesting. Somebody said, why didn't I ask subscribers to say which three words I they would use to describe my style? And that did actually cross my mind. But that also fed into the whole not wanting to be uh, indulgent. So, you know, I didn't. But um, those of you that have suggested words that would describe my style have nearly all used the word edgy. And I, I have to say, I quite like that. I'm, I'm all for edgy. It's just whether, you know, you never know, just because you think of, <laughs> you know, you think of yourself as still a bit edgy, whether that is actually coming across or, you know, because, yeah. I'm not the young whippersnapper I once was. And yes, we all know that that shouldn't matter, but you know, I don't know. Mostly really enjoying the fact that it seems to be inspiring lots of you to follow along. You know, lots of you are doing sort of variations, not necessarily following it, the book to the letter, 
but generally kind of keeping an eye on your wardrobes and looking for inspiration and all of that kind of stuff and I'm really 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 pleased about that that's that feels really nice for me um, and it doesn't make me feel quite so alone in my quest as well I've been a bit I am home alone at the moment quite literally because my husband is in where is he he's in Jakarta he left on Sunday yeah Sunday morning um, I can say it because by the time this video goes out he should be back again hooray I can't say it's awful there are nice bits to it but I'm starting to get a little bit fed up and wanting wanting my friend back uh, but yeah he should be back pretty soon that's one on out of the two all pinned and ready to go my plan is probably next week to go not shopping, <laughs> shopping-ish, um, and see how I get on. And thank you very much to the person whose name, I can't remember off the top of my head, but the person who said, when I was talking about miniskirt, said, why don't you try on a miniskirt when you do your shopping trip? Um, and that is definitely something I'm gonna do. So I think I'll go shopping with tights and um oh, i'm checking what measurement against the other one now um tights and knee high boots and then see whether i could how comfortable do i feel in a mini so yeah that of course is the exact purpose of the of the um plan i've told you this before but i am really not a fast sewer at all i noticed that uh uh, a little while ago we had a bit of a meet up in Yorkshire and Rachel from Stitched Up, if you know Rachel, Rachel was there and she and I had both done some pattern testing for the same pattern and we were talking about it and just in conversation she said, I said oh it took me quite a long time and she said yes it took me a whole day and it was only later on I thought oh <laughs> only a day it took me way longer than a day so I keep meaning to get in touch with Rachel and see whether she has done or will do a video telling us how she manages to do things quickly. Because I just, I am not a fast sewer. I tend to want to do everything. I'm a slow and steady, wins the race kind of a person. Anyway, um, maybe Rachel will let us know. So my pockets are all pinned on and I'm now just going to top stitch them and stop waffling. So pockets are now on. Pockets, there we go, uh, on both sides and now I'm moving on to the back. So all I have to do, this is the skirt part or the bottom part at the back. So all I need to do is sew this centre back seam down to, there is a notch here where this pin is. So I'm going to sew that down to there. The next bit after that is to sew these mitered corners. So that is the wrong side, with the dark being the right side. So it's going to be right sides together. I'm going to fold that across with all those bits of fabric matching. And I'm just going to sew the seam across here. Right, I've got a bit of unpicking to do. So I have sewn my vent on the back up to that marking which is about here-ish and then I've sewn the mitered seams on both sides so it's going to look something like this however I want to overlock it and if I overlock into this corner here as it stands there's absolutely no way that that overlocking is going to look any good on that corner there. So I'm just going to, basically I should have overlocked it first before sewing it. So I'm just going to unpick a few stitches on this edge here of this mitered corner so that I can overlock, make that all nice and neat and then sew it back up again. And then once I've done that, it's a case of just sewing the top part of the back, the bodice part of the back, onto this bottom part. So my bodice, or the top and the bottom have been joined. That's what it looks like 
on the inside. Um, I would say that because this seam is pressed open, it would have looked a tiny bit neater if I'd been able to overlock those edges first. I always find that overlocking after you've pressed it open never looks quite as neat. Maybe that's me and I, I don't get it right. But anyway, nitpicking. This is all going to get the vent and the hem will all be sewn down later, but it's all just pressed into place. So I've got two fronts and a back. So I'm now just going to join them at the shoulders. Good morning. Right, I am back and it's not dark in here anymore. It's 9.30 pretty much on the nose. All the morning jobs have done. Everybody is exercised. Dogs have been exercised. I'm ready to go. I haven't had any breakfast yet, but I will do that when I'm in, in the mood. Um, did just want to say that if I'm looking a little, <laughs> I was going to say Karl Marx, not the right Marx, Groucho Marx with my brows at the moment. I had just had my brows done yesterday morning, just before I started this video. I'm going to see a lovely lady called Kate who gives me eyebrows because I don't actually really have them, but they're always dark for the first day or two. So if I'm looking a bit strange, that's why. And I went to bed with my hair wet. I'm still trying this curly girl method and some days I feel it works and some days I give up. Um, so yeah, anyway, mustn't fiddle with hair. Okay, so before I get on to my next stage of my coat, um, I've been going through the comments from my video earlier in the week. That is the sound of the dog. Um, and I have got a really long list here of patterns to go and have a look at. Some um, skirts. I love the fact people are using the term riding skirts for those really long A-line skirts I've been looking at. That's exactly it. Um, so I've got some skirt ideas here and some trousers. I think I had well, I know I definitely said that I was looking for some that would be similar to those old 90s jeans I've got that have got like the patch pockets at the front and I've got loads of ideas for that. Thank you, Lola. Um, so I'm going to get on with the sewing and then I will enjoy going through this probably this evening. I have queued up, ready to watch while I get this next bit of sewing done, a TED talk that was recommended. I think it was Debs. Debs made this, recommended it. And it's a lady called Stasia Savasuk. Don't know if that's the right pronunciation. Um, TED talk about dressing for confidence and joy. And Debs has really recommended it. I have to say, when I saw it, it looks familiar, so I think I may have watched it in the past, but with my memory, <laughs> I can definitely watch it again. So I've got that lined up, and then after that, what were the other recommendations? Uh, Julie has recommended a channel here on YouTube by somebody called Ellie Jean Royden, so go check that one out. And then a couple of people have mentioned, also here on YouTube, MM Personal Styling. She's called Melissa Morell. I did have a phase of watching some of her videos, so I've seen her videos. She's all about, I think her kind of catchphrase is styling for the everyday woman. So I kind of had a binge phase of her videos a while back and you know, sometimes you need, you binge and then you break, don't you? And the other thing that I really wanted to say um, and forgot was how frustrating it was that all those inspiration um, pictures that I used the other week or earlier this week, were all young skinny women. Incredibly frustrating. Um, yeah, I mean, as if. I mean, we're looking at images of people young enough to be my daughter, probably younger than my daughters, and all super, super slim, and it's really frustrating. So that wasn't my intention. I really was keeping my eyes peeled for a range of women, but yeah. Fashion is way behind on all of that. I know they throw some token older people or they throw in a few curvier models every now and then, but there's a way to go. So I finished yesterday by putting my, adding my shoulders together, my shoulder seams, and it's a bit of a curved seam. So just moved the ham out of the way. Had to press it on my ham. So we've got something resembling a coat, although it's not joined at the sides yet. Um, and oh, I can't go for any further back, so the back is where the hem has been pinned up. 
So now all I need to do is put on the sleeve. I'm just going to attach them and do them in the flat so you don't have to set them in. They're not um, on the shoulder, it's a slightly dropped shoulder, which really helps. Tape measure, scissors, <laughs> pincushion, my accessories of choice. So yeah, it's dead, dead easy, isn't it? All you've got to do is match up the center notch on your sleeve piece with the shoulder seam and um, I am a pinner I can't remember if I said yesterday I do feel like this is the kind of fabric that for those of you that don't pin is an absolute dream because it's not moving anywhere it's lovely it's actually really nice I wonder where this um, fabric came from because as I said, Simply Fabrics, it's often designer dead stock. Oh, I'll tell you what I wanted to say. Sorry, it's the morning. You can tell I'm a bit full of enthusiasm. Um, I had a message yesterday from a lady saying, I think I may have won the Serious Readers Light. And she just wanted to check uh, that, you know, she hadn't been contacted by you know, some dodgepot scammers. Dreadful, really, isn't it? They're everywhere. Um, but yeah, we confirmed that the name of the person that had been in contact with her was, in fact, the person, uh, my contact at, at Serious Lights. And um, yes, she's got the light. Now, obviously, I can't breach someone else's privacy um, by telling you who that is. But maybe if she's watching, she and if she's happy to share, maybe she'll comment below. And if she does, I'll pin it to the top. Um, but yeah, how brilliant. I'm so so pleased i wish i could say you can all have one but i am sadly not a multi-millionaire um but yeah she is gonna love it because as you know i'm a super big fan and i am very very grateful to them to serious lights to for giving such a you know really nice generous prize um but yes a couple of people asked what had happened with that so maybe she will comment and let you all know who she is Okay, just checking in. Both my sleeves are now in. So I have... That's the one thing about making coats. There's a lot of bulk. Um, I've got my big ironing board back up again for that reason. And I've shunted my sewing machine over a little bit just because you end up with all the fabric dropping off the edge. So it is bulky, but, you know, manageable. Hem to waist, it's not really a waist, it's a drop waist, to underarm, to sleeve hem, and do that on both sides. In the meantime, I have had a look at the TED Talk from, what was her name, hold on, Stasia Savasa, thank you Deb, oh my god, yes, I have seen it before, um, but I had forgotten all about it, and yeah, thank you so much for the recommendation. It was great to see it again. I think lots of you will enjoy watching it. Um, I am somebody that cries at things at the drop of a hat, so I did shed a little tear. Uh, I don't think most mornings there's something on Instagram makes me cry. I don't know, maybe it's a menopausal thing. Anyway, really, really enjoyed it. I don't mean cry in a bad way, by the way. Go have a look at it. You will be really inspired. And then I'm now having a look at the, what's she called, Ellie Jean Royden channel that Julie mentioned. And I'm really enjoying this content as well. So she focuses a lot on body types. And I noticed there's a video about your face type. And she follows the Kibbe method, which I have come across before. Um, if you want to know more, go have a look at her channel because she's the expert. Um, I did a, I do remember in the past I have looked at the Kibbe body types and I kind of self-diagnosed myself as a dramatic classic. Yes, a dramatic classic. I quite like the sound of that. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm kind of about, there's one video she's got which is called If You Look Like This, This Is Your Body Type Kibbe 101 and that's the video that tells you what the different body types are and helps you decide which one you might be. And I'm about halfway through watching that. So I'm gonna keep going with that. I sewed up the side seams, hem to sleeve. I have pressed under the 
hem on the sleeve, which I haven't, I'm not sewing it down yet, but it's just pressed up. And I've pressed up the hem at the front. I'm not sure that you can see that yet, but it's pressed and pinned. All these seams have been overlocked together and top stitched, as you know, but um, that is very tricky to do on this section here under the sleeve. And so I did do it on one side, but for anybody, I think you need to have a little bit of experience because you end up sewing that section absolutely fine up to up the underarm. But this section here, you end up sort of sewing in a tunnel and you can only sew just a few centimeters and then you have to push the fabric along and you end up with a kind of tunnel of fabric that starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So just for interest, I decided on this side that I would just top stitch the seam up to here and press it on this one to see, you know, did I really need the hassle, <laughs> frankly, and it's absolutely fine. So make your life easy. Don't bother attempting to top stitch the sleeve on there. I only have one collar piece that is the full thing and the under collar I ended up cutting in two halves, added a bit of seam allowance and have joined it up the middle. The other thing to mention with this collar, if you're thinking of making it, is that it is unusual in that you can see what I've done here. I have pinned along that edge which I think is the edge that you would naturally think is the edge that you're going to join to the coat. Uh, but it is a slightly different design and that is actually not the edge that you join to the coat, you're joining this edge down here. Then I'm also going to join my facing pieces. So I've got the two long facing pieces that look like that and they are going to be joined to this piece here. So right sides together, they're going to be joined to this piece here. And basically what will happen is that the collar will be made and attached to the coat and then the facing will be attached to the coat with the collar sandwiched in between. The unpicker has come out and made a mistake. So I made my collar and I trimmed down the sides going close up to the corners. I graded the seams so one side is slightly longer than the other or one side is shorter than the other. Um, pressed it all beautifully. Press the, what I do is I press the seams open on the sharp end of my clapper. I did take some photographs and then I turn it out and with the aid of my trusty point turner get it all looking nice. Give it a press so you're pressing it to slightly favour the side that's going to be public. Jobs are good. Mm. And then you, um, this is the side that's going to attach to the coat. So I just gave that a quick basting shut. And then I realised that I had made a mistake. This edge should be joining the neck of the coat. So I've unpicked it on this side. Now, of course, it's not looking quite right because it was trimmed. <laughs> So it's not the full length and it's tapering down at the edges. Um, hey ho, so you know, you live and learn, don't you? There's nothing that can't be undone. So I'm going to go right side to right side and where these pins are is where the notches are on the collar. So each one of those matches up. My next point is this corner that I've just unpicked to which matches up to this inner corner on the coat. So just there. So I match that up. And then my next point is where I've got this pin here. It's a notch that's sitting about here. And that is going to line up with this edge of the collar. So I'm going to pin it in place. At the moment, that is looking like a bit of a, a bit of a mess. It's not looking very straightforward, but what I'm going to do, is I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to sew up to that corner point 
and then while it's in the sewing machine I'm going to snip into that corner there is a little snip mark or a clip mark on the pattern I'm just going to clip into that inner corner up to but not as far as a centimetre so my stitching my seam allowance is a centimetre my stitching line is going to be a centimetre so I'm going to clip to say seven millimetres if we're being exact and that will release the fabric and then it will open out and then I will be able to sew this little section here or this little section here and it will be seamless and it won't be as difficult as it looks. So the collar is now in and it looks like this from this side. I've um, graded down the seam allowance so i.e. the seam allowance is you've got what, one two layers of the collar and then one layer of the coat so you've got three seams all there so grading just means that you trim them down so that each level each layer is sitting at a slightly distant different distance so the coat seam allowance is stayed at a centimeter and then the collar I've trimmed probably about I don't know it's probably half a centimeter and then I'm going to add the facing so yeah I'm just pinning this right sides together um, so dark side of the facing to the dark side of the moon no of the coat um, and again I've got notches on this that match up with the center back and obviously the shoulder seams match the shoulder seams and I still have this whole area to deal with so the same thing will happen again when I get to here I need to clip into it and then I sew down there and then the whole of the center front of the um, of the coat. Yeah I'm on the home straight really because once this is in I will have to do some uh, what do you call it under stitching so I'll under stitch the facing just to help it turn the way that I want it to and then what I need to decide is if I want to stitch it down um, on the front and on the back. I know with the green one I definitely stitched the back facing down. Let's have a look. There's my back facing on the green one. Oh look that was clever of me. I made a little loop. I might do that now. Now is the time because I'm sandwiching. Okay I'll just make a quick loop. Um, yeah so that is stitched down. What did I do with these? Mm. I've done a little bit of hand stitching, some invisible stitches, which with something like this, you can get away with. I mean, you can't really see that that's stitched down because it's yeah, the nature of the fabric. Anyway, we'll see. So that's where I'm at now, almost there. Okay, so here I am in my completed coat. I am really pleased with how it's turned out. Um, I didn't, in the end, sew down the facing. My plan was, to sew it down on this outer edge um, but there's a good reason why I didn't which I hadn't thought about and that is because oh, tripping up over a dog that's because it's got pockets <laughs> and if I'd sewn it down it kind of runs across the pockets so if you're thinking of making it and you want to sew that facing down then don't put your pockets on at the beginning and put them on later which is entirely possible, probably a bit cumbersome just because the size, you know, the amount of the fabric, but um, yeah. So all I have done is just done a little bit of a hand stitch and sewn it down at the hem here, the hem seam here, so I've sewn it there. Obviously it is secured, excuse me, can't see, Obviously it is secured down at the hem and then at the shoulder seam I haven't actually, I could have done a stitch in the ditch on the shoulder seam but I didn't do that because what I did do was sew the facing down on the back so this circle has been sewn down. Let me see if you can see it um, when I put it on. I'm quite happy with that, I, I don't mind how it looks at all and I don't like a facing to be flapping around. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it as it is at the moment and see how I get on and see whether 
this loose element of the facing becomes problematic and if it does then I will attempt an invisible stitch down the front there. But yeah, I really, really like it. I love the neckline in this position as it's kind of designed to be. But as I said earlier, you could always fold it over if you wanted it to be like a more traditional lapel. Um, yeah, I think I said before, it's probably a bit narrow. But you could add some width to it and have it like a traditional lapel and there is plenty of room, well in mine, there's plenty of room to do buttons if you wanted to. But I like it as it was designed to be something between coat and coat again. It is certainly warm enough even though it's not lined um, and I can see me wearing this until it starts to get absolutely freezing cold. Um, and it certainly feels casual enough that it will be the coat that you kind of throw on. I'm about to swan around in the supermarket in it because that's what I've been dying to do but I don't tend to wear things until I've shown you here. So yes, thank you very much for keeping me company on my journey while I was sewing. Um, I'm hoping that it might inspire some of you, even one of you, who fancies the idea of sewing a coat and is a bit intimidated by the ones that involve lots of tailoring and lining and shoulder pads and all of that stuff. And hopefully you can see that this actually is pretty straightforward and not as intimidating as you might think. I'm not on commission from Stylark for this pattern, by the way. I just particularly love it. Okie dokie, so that is me done now for this week. Watch this space, I will be back soon. Thank you very much everyone. See you soon, I'm off to waft in my coat. Bye bye.